this is a rare disease and at that time relatively newly described in the, in the broadly across the world even though dr red initially characterized in the 60s but it didn't really become aware until the early 80s that filtering into training doctors who are not specialists in this it took a while to do that the scientific journey is very very long it's slow moving little steps um, along the way there could be big steps that happen but it's still a lot of work to be done And now it's the uh, cause of Fret syndrome being in the MECP2 gene defect and Dr. Zogby's work. That was a key point, too. We're fortunate that we're dealing, for the most part, with one major gene responsible for that disease. Finding the gene was an, was an amazing thing because we weren't sure that it was something we did that caused Fret syndrome. It just opened up a whole new world of investigation and hope, really. Adrian Bird's work was monumental in terms of changing our conception of this disorder. The idea that you could really turn the gene back on and things would get better, it's not just for Rett syndrome that it changed our concept, but it's really for like neurodevelopmental disorders in, in large. It gave us real um, hope, obviously, and it gave us an idea of where we want to go. One of the key ways it's grown is with the understanding of the genetic basis and then with the developments of genetically engineered models. It has brought in a whole bunch of people who are basic and translational scientists. We look at the mice, we can start seeing similar brainwave abnormalities, which is great because now we can design something that does the whole circle. We can develop new therapies and test them preclinically and build in biomarkers that we will be able to study in people and bring it back. I want to cure probably just as much, if not more than the next person. Um, I want to cure even if when it comes, it's not able to fully cure Lauren. But I've got to get through today until that happens. Um, and that to me is the huge difference and the huge importance of, an, of this particular organization is they provide that support, that information, those connections that get us through today. It's about funding research to help find a cure or find treatments to make your daughter's life or son's life better. It's about supporting advocacy, the things that's gonna help unlock resources. It's about family support. Every family is different and every family needs help in different ways. IRSF is the most important organization that is doing all these different things for families. I think it's very exciting that the pharma community and the biotech community recognizes Rett syndrome as an area that would be useful to develop therapies. Now you have people coming in who are neuroscientists and molecular biologists. I have seen the progression of there had never been a, uh, an industry supported trial to now there have been multiple industry supported trials, including now phase three trials and a lot of interest early stage, later stage, all along the realm. I think that's extraordinarily exciting.